How I feel right now, a little bit nervous. Hopefully I don't run into those bears and cougars. Hopefully they're sleeping. The heat tomorrow is gonna be pretty rowdy. But other than that, I think this is more, more about my mental strength that I'm pushing on. I'm attempting an Everesting, which means I will be going up and down this mountain until I've reached the height of Mount Everest, 8,848 meters. Wow, can't faff around too much. This admin definitely adds up. Okay. If I was just bombing road, I would mentally just be absolutely crushed. Doing it on a mountain bike, having a good time, helps me get through something like this because I know I can have a good time. When you go for a ride, your body is hard at work exercising and your brain is processing everything at a blistering pace. But motivation isn't controlled by physics or by physiology. Motivation is psychologically driven. Stress, fatigue, and your inner monologue have a massive impact on your ability to perform. So when you feel like you're too tired to go on, is it your body that wants to quit or is it your mind? Evening went by pretty quick. It was nice because I couldn't see the Garmin. Now we're gonna go get halfway, get the halfway mark, and then we'll be halfway, just like that. Certain parts of the brain regulate endurance and mental fatigue. Under intense exercise, our muscles use up a lot of energy and experience wear and tear. In the brain, this causes an accumulation of adenosine, a neurotransmitter that contributes to the feeling of fatigue. At the same time, our levels of dopamine, which helps us feel motivated and increases our drive, begin to fall. As adenosine builds up and dopamine levels go down, our brain signals to our muscles that it's time to slow down, and feelings of tiredness and, I can't do this, begin to set in. It's really hot, it's really dusty because this is a shuttle road and a residential road. The heat, I don't know, it's probably like 30, 30 degrees out. It's definitely impacting my face. I really want to do this in 24 hours. Don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. So I guess that's like the only really negative thing. It's amazing that I can get down the freaking trail right now. Rubber shine down. 452, 552, 652. I'll probably be back here at 7. Every thought we have stimulates the release of neurotransmitters. When we channel our inner voice in positive or negative self-talk, we actually change the chemistry in our brain. Negative self-talk has a detrimental effect on performance. Brain coordination slows down, thought processing becomes more difficult, and we pay more attention to fear, which affects our mood, memory, and impulse control. But positive thinking does the opposite. It improves our ability to pay attention, focus, and solve problems faster. And it helps us focus on process instead of outcomes, which puts us in a better position to achieve our goals. The parts that really hurt right now are my um, my hands, my butt, and my knees. I'm just hanging on. Exercise gives a low dose jolt to the part of the brain that helps us anticipate pleasure and makes us feel motivated and hopeful. Over time, this leads to higher circulating levels of dopamine and more available dopamine receptors, which tips our mental scale away from pain. 
Because our tolerance for discomfort is actually improving on a molecular level, we become better prepared for when we need to dig a little deeper. The one thing you're gonna do right now. Head off. We're okay, A901, we can definitely stop. We could be on the YouTube. It's done? Yes, 8901. 8903. Is that acceptable? We can <laughs> we can stop? Flat pedals. Downhill tires. <laughs> Three training rides. How's it feel? Like you could keep going. <laughs> Ten thousand isn't that much further, but you know. That's for another day. For me, Everesting was a perfect challenge. I wanted a long endurance effort to push myself and to deepen the pool of experience I have to draw on in those difficult situations, on or off the bike. I think it's working. <laughs>